Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode 84. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I recorded the actual No Catch Your Name episode, and it's just because of life being busy, but I'm here now, so that's all that counts, <laughs> or all that matters. Um, I think I turned off everything that would be making a lot of noises, except there's a ceiling fan right above us on because it's hot, and I turned the air off so that it wouldn't be kicking on and off because the air thingy is right there in the closet. And it's soft. But anyways, I got some finished objects to share with you guys today. And some whips and uh, a couple other little things. I can't think right off the top of my head, but we'll figure it out when we get further down. But yeah, so um, I do have a bunch of finished objects, like I said. But some of them aren't really, don't really have patterns because they're just dishcloths and stuff that I just randomly did. Let me dig them all out. <laughs> they're all living in a bag. I was actually working on one of these, um on the little crocheting chat that I recorded a few days ago just to update you guys on why I kind of been MIA but it's in this beautiful bag that I won from the crochet closet I was her hundredth subscriber uh, months ago now <laughs> but um, this bag I don't know if you can see it but it says Betsy makes B-E-T-S-Y-M-A-K-E-S -E -E I guess it's Etsy I have actually looked <laughs> I need to go look but it's a really cute bag. I love it. It's perfect for smaller projects. So I have my cotton yarn in here, my hook, my scissors, and I've just been making all kinds of stuff. I had one, two, three, four balls of cotton cotton yarn in there. Two of the little um, yarn V. What are they called? Uh, is it the dollops? I can't remember if they're called the dollops. But the little cotton little yarn bees are little tiny little cakes. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. I can't remember. Um, I had two of those in there. A blue color and a purpley greeny color. <laughs> um, and I had a scrap ball of some yarn. I can't remember what it is. I bought it when I was pregnant. When I was still pregnant with Jesse. So it was 2016. Maybe 2015. Around there. <laughs> I made him a hat out of it. And uh, he wore it at the hospital. But the leftover from that I made some dishcloths and some face scrubbies with. And... Than a yarn that Becky from Funny Farm Crochet sent me. So yeah, so point of the thing is I made some dishcloths. These ends aren't woven in. <laughs> this was just the my mindless crochet I've been working on. Because I want to crochet, but I don't really want to sometimes sit down and actually like, have to read a pattern. And uh, with bit going back and forth to doctor offices over Jesse's arm and just all the busyness that I've been doing lately, I just like to have something that I can just randomly work on. So I made that dishcloth. This one, this is just half double crochets back and forth with an eye hook. One of them, I think this one's with an H hook, and then I had to use my H hook for another project. And I had more, multiple H hooks, but I can't find them. I've lost them. So I, I whipped out an eye hook and made these ones, which I actually like because it makes it holier, which makes it move better when it's wet. And then this is one of the other yarns. I know this is a Hobby Lobby yarn, the one I made Jesse's hat with. I just don't remember what it is. I'm not sure if it's. I love cotton or if it was yarn bee or something but I remember getting it there when I was pregnant and then here's another one I gotta weave in the ends and they're not any particular size or anything I just kind of half double crochet until I feel like they're good size to do my dishes with and then I made face scrubbies <laughs> I have how many here one two three four five six seven eight nine nine here this is one of the little um, cakes I was talking about. It's yarn be something. I can't remember if it's the dollops, but it's the cotton yarn. I made these. These are actually for my sister. Uh, she hasn't really been here since I made them, so I, I gotta give these to her. And then these are with the leftover hat yarn. I made three of them. I gotta weave in the ends still. And then I made myself four, which are already, there's some of them are in my bathroom and some are in the dirty laundry uh, because I've used them. And then I made the girl that I babysit two or three of them. So I made a bunch of face scrubbies. And it's just, again, like I said, mindless crochet. And these are actually super handy. When I was making them, I was like, well, it's the same thing as like a, a rag. Why can't I just use rag? But this cotton, this yarn bee, uh cotton yarn is so soft. And it gets even softer when you wash it. And it just feels so good on your face with your soap on there. And I just, I love them. I'm so glad I made them. And I'm definitely going to keep making more if mine wear out eventually. But um, I've already used them a bunch of times and washed them and used them. And they're still holding up really good. So um, I'm glad I made them. And I can understand now why people sell these so much in craft fairs. Um, because if someone's had them before and used them, they love them. And I guess it's just trying to get people to use them the first time. Because like me, I was hesitant. But then I went ahead and tried it. And I love them now. So woohoo. But yeah, I got a bunch of those. So I made a bunch of cotton stuff. <laughs> 
and like I said, no patterns. This was just, um, I don't know about that one. Yeah, these are all just half double crochet. I think I did uh, 12 and then I just increased three times. These ones are with one strand held together, but with um, these ones out of those little tiny cotton balls I was talking about, and mine that are the blue ones, the little cotton balls, I think, I held them double because the cotton was thinner. I think it says it's a worsted, but it's more like a three. But anyways, cotton stuff. And I got some more cotton over here. I pulled out all my cotton because I didn't have much cotton at all until Becky sent me that. And now I have a ton of cotton that she sent me it's still sealed. I'm not going to open any of it until I use up the random cottons I already have open. And then I'm just going to make a ton of um, dishcloths and face scrubbies and maybe some soap sacks. Because I asked Devin, he uses bar soap. And I'm actually planning on sh switching to bar soap when all my bottles run out because we're wanting to try to decrease our plastic use here. And, um, you know, bar soap comes in cardboard boxes normally. But, um, anyway, <laughs> I asked him if I made him a soap sack if he would use it. And he said that he would try it and see if he liked it. But um, his work is really dirty. He comes home er almost every day just black covered in hydraulic fluid and brake powder and all kinds of just stuff from his work. And so he's afraid that he would keep it dirty. But I'm like, I can make an unlimited amount of them and uh, cotton is biodegradable it's not like acrylic yarn which I don't think does biodegrade I know there's a piece laying on my porch it's been out there forever and I've actually purposely left it there in my garden to see if it did um, degrade after a while and it's still going strong it's lost its color but it's still there anyways <laughs> next finished object went on a little side note there all right this is a cute little reindeer I guess it's amigurumi, but it's also like a ragdoll. And it's called Reindeer Ragdoll <laughs> by Passionate Crafter. It is a free pattern on her, I'm assuming it's a girl. I didn't even look. Uh, her website. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I was originally, for my Christmas wreath that I showed a while ago, just the form, um, I, was, I wanted to make a reindeer amigurumi to put on it. And then I'm going to put like Christmas lights or something on there also to give it a little extra for my Christmas wreath for our county fair, which starts the last day of August. So I gotta get on the ball because it's already July. But um, I didn't like the pattern. I started working on it and actually I still have it. I made the head and it, I couldn't get it the right shape. It just kept coming out different than the pattern looked. So I just got annoyed with it. Instead of just trying to fix it, I just I was like, okay, whatever. So I threw the head away. I put it in the garbage, like on top of the garbage. And it wasn't dirty garbage, it was like my craft garbage. So nothing gross was in it. And um, it was just the head all finished with like a long string because I left a string to tie on. And then one day Jesse came in there, I was sitting on the couch, and he said, Mama, why did you throw that wrecking ball away? And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he ran and got it out of my garbage can, my craft garbage can, and brought it to me, holding it by the string, and it was a string with a ball on the end of it. And he said, why did you throw this wrecking ball away? And I said, oh, it's a reindeer head. And he said, it's a wrecking ball. And I said, well, you can have it if you want it. So he's been playing with it, and it's still in his bedroom right now. He'll hold it by the string and hit his toys and knock them down and say wrecking ball. So he thinks it's a wrecking ball. So it is useful. I guess that's a finished object. I made a wrecking ball with eyeballs. It has safety eyes on it, but he doesn't care. So I made this one. I looked and found another amigurumi. This is almost the size of the wreath, but I have it. I've had the wreath and I, you know, I fixed it up to where it fits in there a certain way to where, you know, the, the body is on part of the wreath, the head is on part of the wreath, and the arms are on the two sides of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it to the wreath form and then I'm going to make some Christmas lights or something to have him holding it and then that's going to be my Christmas wreath. <laughs> so I think it turned out cute. I did do a few things different on the pattern. On the pattern the arms, the ears, the antlers are all separate. They're not part of the body or the head. They're you're meant to, you're supposed to sew the whole body together and then sew the arms and let the arms and antlers like behind it. I didn't want to do that so I just attached uh, all the front pieces to the front of the body and all the back pieces to the back part of the part body and then when I went around I just sewed it all together. It took forever and this part here was really annoying because I had to sew all the way around the ear and then the antlers and I switched colors to keep it you know to where you couldn't see where I sewed it so much and it was a pain in the butt but I did it and I finished it and I think he's super super duper cute <laughs> but yeah he's pretty big. His antlers aren't as stiff but if I wanted to when I put him on the reef I could probably tack it down a little bit but I think he's adorable and all he needs is like um, to be holding something to make it a little bit more Christmassy. And yeah, so I will show that to you guys when it gets more done. I have the wreath done, but it kind of came out a funky shape. I'm doing the pool noodle thing and the first one turned out perfect. What was it? 
What one did I do first? I can't even remember now. Fourth of July wreath. Yeah, it was an American flag wreath. It came out like perfect circle, awesome looking. But that one came out wonky shaped. <laughs> so, but this ranger helps hide the wonkiness of it. So I just, I need to practice a little bit more with the pool noodle method and I'll eventually get it down pat and it'll look awesome. I'm hoping. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that. Did I say who that was from? Passionate Crafter, but it'll be linked below if you can't understand what I'm saying. All right, next finish. Okay, I got two more finished objects. One I can show you and one I can't. So my next one that I can show you is part of Jaden Stitch's folk calendar, folk art calendar blanket. <laughs> I finished the barn. I'm trying to hold it up there. Can you see it? Yeah. So I have the barn, the trees, and the sun on there. Can't tell if you can see it. <laughs> okay, and then the barn is off below the sun. So I do, I am behind a little bit because she released the houses that go on the dark green part. I haven't even started those. But uh, I'm not too worried about it. I can catch up at any time because those are super easy little patterns that just take a few minutes to make and the worst part sewing on the stuff. That's horrible. But uh, I think this is going to look so cool when it gets done. And um, depending on how much is on there by the time my fair rolls around, I may enter in the fair. I don't know yet. I got to work on the little houses soon. But that is the... Um, Folk Art Calendar Blanket by Jada and Stitches, and she's got the video tutorial of every bit of it uh, that's released so far. She usually releases a new part of it towards the end of the month, like in the 20s of the month, and uh, so the next one should be kind of a couple weeks. And she releases um, the bonus pieces every now and then, like she released um, pine looking trees, like Christmas -y looking shaped trees, uh, and I think that's all the extra so far. But yeah, so that's fun and a free pattern if you're interested. And I love her tutorials. She makes some of the best tutorials and they're easy to follow. My last finished object I can't show you because it's actually a pattern that I designed. <laughs> and um, I'm not releasing it until September because I want to do a crochet along with it when I release it. It's my idea. <laughs> and it's actually, I have one designed completely and made. I have one finished sitting in my living room right now. Um, I have the pattern pretty much typed up. I just have to type up the assembly, um, the instructions for assembly. And I'm working on the second one right now to take pictures for uh, the pattern. You know, um, pictures of all the parts and the sewing together and all that kind of stuff. So it is an amigurumi, <laughs> but it's um, a fun one. I love it. I'm so glad. It came out exactly the way I wanted it to come out, and it's pretty cool. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. And actually, I have an idea to make another pattern with the same pattern, the same base pattern, and then just add different parts to make it slightly different that I may also get try to get done between now and September, which i got time, and um, put them both out soon. Oh, so we shall see. I'm excited about it, though. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Okay, that's all of my finished objects. So now I need to walk on whips. Let's see here. We'll talk about this one first. All right, yeah. My bag over here. <laughs> this is the High Tides, what was it? High Tides Wave by Bee Ball Blanket. This was a crochet along. It actually ends tomorrow, the actual crochet along. But I'm not, I didn't really enter the crochet along. I just wanted the pattern. And I got the whole pattern section right here. <laughs> uh, well, the third part. So there's all, there was only three parts. There's my other H hook. It's in here. I knew I had another H hook somewhere. But um, I did work on this some from the last time I filmed. And I put a progress marker on it this time so you guys would see. Let me try to move the working yarn so I don't pull out any stitches. This is taking forever. And it's just because, I don't know why. There's no reason. I'm just kind of bored with it, I guess. Where is that stitch marker? Okay. Right here is where I was last time. Where this ball is hanging right here. So I've made, I put like four and a half rows on it since the last time I showed it. But I haven't really worked on it <laughs> very much. And I'm to a point in the pattern now where it's the same, um, like four or five rows repeated over and over again, and it's just to make it grow in size. So at this point, you can keep repeating the pattern as much as you want to make it as big or small as you want. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to actually make this the size that the pattern is written to. And I think I counted it and then it's 27 more rows. 24 or 27 more rows, and then I'll be done with it. And if I get it done in time, I'm going to enter this into our county fair as the baby blanket category because it's going to be like a kid's size blanket. But it's made with Red Heart Super Saver Ombre 
what is this? it's not super sour is it maybe i don't know <laughs> uh scuba it's the blues it's really pretty so far there's a whole entire jumbo skein in here and then the other jumbo skein i rolled it into a ball <laughs> to make it easier to use this is the second jumbo skein and I think the pattern says that it takes about two and a half of the jumbo ones. So I still got a lot of crocheting to do on that. I think I might make it small for the fair. And then after the fair, I got more of that yarn. I have two more full balls of it plus that one that's half used. I might try to put all of it in there just to get rid of that yarn. And then it'll come out whatever size it comes out at the time. But that is a paid for pattern now. It was free uh, the beginning of June, I think, is the, the, was the cutoff to get it for free. But it's worth it because it's a beautiful pattern. If you like mandala-ish looking uh, patterns. And a lot of people have been doing all kinds of different colorways of that. I just went with that because the pattern when I first seen it was in that exact same colorway. <laughs> the pictures. And I've seen some other ones in the purple shades of ombre. And I just thought it was really pretty. And I had some of that yarn on hand and I wanted to use it. I bought it just because I liked it without anything in mind. So it's nice to be able to use it for something that's going to be real pretty. All right. Shoot. Okay, I'll try here. Oh gosh. Ugh. I'm knocking stuff over. I got stuff piled up here. Stay. Okay. This is the Pilgrim Toppers. <laughs> Pilgrim bottle, bottle Toppers. Can't even say it. Pilgrim Bottle Toppers that I'm making for my sister. She bought me the pattern. It is paid for pattern, by the way. Um. I worked on a little bit since last time you guys seen it, but not very much at all. I need to work on it more. This is all I got. You know what? No, I didn't either. This is exactly the way it was last time I showed it. Because I was talking about how it looks like blanket off of Brave Little Toaster. So I haven't worked on it at all. I don't know why. I just haven't been back in mind, I guess. <laughs> but, so, I'm not even going to show that since there's no progress. That's all yarn. All that's just yarn. <laughs> None of that's project. But I will still link it below um, if you want to go see what it's supposed to look like. But yeah my last finished object or work in progress is almost finished all i have to do is make eyeballs for it and i was going to use safety eyes because the pattern actually calls for safety eyes but i didn't have safety eyes that were big enough so all i didn't have the right safety eyes did i already say that i can't remember i had to stop for a second <laughs> but it is called octopus frenzy and it's by the left-handed crocheter it's a free pattern on their website and yeah, so it's octopus. I, I think I did it a little wrong, the legs. I feel like, because they're kind of supposed to be lower, but mine came out super wide, so I did put them a little bit higher up. And actually decreased it a little to make it tighter, or it would have been higher up on its body. But I'm just going to make some crochet eyes and put on it somewhere in front of the legs. But yeah, so the white is all Red Heart Super Saver white. And this is um, some yarn that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby the other day when it was marked down and it's Lion Brand Flicka in the colorway Waiting Pool so it's Lion Brand Flicka and it's just cotton polyester I think yeah 50% cotton 50% polyester blend it's really nice someone told me that it's comparable to comfy cotton at Walmart uh, I haven't ever tried any of that so I don't know it says it's a size 3, but I'm treating it like a size 4, and it's working out perfect. It worked perfectly with the Red Heart. It's about the same size as Red Heart. It's like a fat 4, or 3, <laughs> fat 3. And, yeah, I think I used an H hook for this pattern, which I was a little worried about because I was afraid the holes would be too big, but I think it looks fine. And, actually, the pattern that I designed, I designed it with an H hook, and it looks good. But you can always change the hook, you know, just because a pattern says to use one hook, it doesn't mean you have to use that hook. Yeah, so I think it's going to be super cute. I'm going to make uh, black eyes probably. I don't know. <laughs> I have to um, look at it and figure it out. But it's super cute. I, I love this pattern. I think the finished object is really cute. But um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Because you have to you make the ball of the body. And then you have to make each of these legs individually. And then you crochet them all together. To make like a circle of legs. And that was just kind of annoying. Because <laughs> that's eight little legs. But they were easy patterns. Um, I made two and then I had to pattern in my head. And I just sat there watching Stranger Things and made the rest of them. Um, yeah, so it's cute. And it'll be it'll be done. I'll probably show it next time I film if I can remember. I've gotten to where I print the patterns out. I, probably, I need to not do that because it wastes paper and ink. But sometimes I don't like having my tablet or something in my face all day. So I need to uh, 
get over it because I don't want to use so much paper and uh, ink. <laughs> ink is expensive. But yeah, that is all of my whips and my finished objects. The only ones I can't show you is the one that I'm designing. And actually, I almost accidentally showed it to you the other day. Um, I don't know if I've put that clip up yet. I took a clip of me doing stuff around the house. I was going to do a vlog this weekend and I just got distracted and didn't. But it was in the background and I was like, dang, I can't show that because it's right there where I can see it. The only other thing I have to talk about is the Christmas in July make-along that's going on on the Facebook group. If you're interested in checking it out, the link will be below in the description box. Um, you have to be a member of Facebook to join the group. So if you don't do Facebook, I guess, I'm sorry, you can't do that. But um, Facebook is the easiest platform for me to contact people on. And I don't like having it spread out over multiple platforms. It's too difficult to keep up with everything. Because it's hard enough on Facebook to keep up with it. But um, I don't want to spread that over multiple platforms. But anyways, I've got over 100 entries right now. I think it just hit over 100 today. Uh, all kinds of awesome looking things. I love seeing what people make for make-alongs. It's fun. We got crochet stuff. We knitted stuff. There was a cross-stitch one and a painting. So that's really cool that all these different crafts are all coming together to um, get ready for Christmas. So, yeah, uh, I know Christmas isn't everybody's big thing, but it's a big thing to me, and um, I like the idea of getting prepared for it early. Me and Devin always try to finish all of our Christmas shopping and all that by Halloween um, so that we don't have to worry about it over the holidays because, <laughs> you know, no one likes being stressed out over the holidays, and they're pretty stressful anyways just in themselves. So uh, we try, always try to get the gifts and all that stuff bought up early so that we don't have to deal with all that stuff during the fun holidays, which for us is Halloween and Christmas. Thanksgiving to me is kind of a useless holiday because it's kind of weird. Um, you know, the history of it's just kind of weird. And um, it's, I always tell Devin it's just a glorified dinner. And I'm not a big fan of turkey anyway. So it's, um, I get that it's like for family to hang out, but we hang out with our family all the time anyway. So it's not like we never see each other and only hang out on Thanksgiving. <laughs> so it's just a glorified dinner to us. So Halloween and Christmas are our big celebration celebratory dates <laughs> but yeah so if you're interested in them out it'll be linked below i will be drawing four winners from the finished photo album um uh, sometime in august the beginning of august uh and announcing it afterwards <laughs> i know for sure the winners will be getting bags made for me and stitch markers because i had some stitch markers donated by kim she made a really i'm pretty sure she made this because she makes stuff like this really cute card and it's, you know, it's got a note in there. But it's, it's, I don't know if you can see it all, but it says post. And this little thing comes out. Devin actually pulled it out because he thought it was a note. <laughs> but I was like, dude, it's just decorative. Calm down. But she made a bunch of stitch markers. And what I'll do is I'm going to split them up evenly between the four people who win. Oh, gosh. It's gonna, I'm going to take a minute to pull these all out. Okay, the first one, she made two of each of them. Oh, gosh. She organized them very nice. She had them all in little baggies. But this one says... Crochet Queen Diva. Crochet Diva. And it's got like a blue ball on it. I wonder if I can show them in here. This one is, is a yarn hank or I guess skein. It's with the same little blue ball. Where are the other ones that aren't? And then this one says Knitting Queen. So I will put that aside and make sure that I send it to knitters and not crocheters. Uh, let's see here. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Okay. And this one is... Uh, one is a little thing of buttons and one is like a safety pin, a fake safety pin. And then the other one, two, three, four, five, six sets are Christmas themed, which is perfect because it's a Christmas mouth. These two are candy canes. And then there's some stockings, some wreaths, and some little snowmen that say joy, I think, yeah. Snowflakes, two of each, did I say that? and Christmas trees. So that's cool. I will divvy them up equally between uh, all the people who win. Ah, I gotta, my hair is blowing from the fan right into my eyeball. <laughs> but uh, So she donated those for the cause and bags for sure. Potentially patterns. I don't know. I don't know. I have to um, see what happens between now. You know, we still got a few weeks to worry about it. Let's see here. One, two whole weeks in a few days before the cow, the mal is over. And then the next week after that is when I'll be drawing winners and doing all that. So I don't know. I might add some other stuff in there. I know I'm going to make 
project bags for the winners because I've already got the material right here off the screen and probably crab bags because I got a ton of crab bags cut out that I'll be sewing soon because when I do reopen my Etsy shop in a few weeks it's gonna have crab bags in it <laughs> a bunch of crab bags I've got 45 of them cut out to sew and put in the shop because I've had so many people asking me about crab bags and um then project bags somewhere around there too I don't know if I'll have them all on the same day as when I open my shop but for sure the crab bags and then project bags will be right after that sometime but yeah I think that's everything for this episode so I'm gonna go ahead and hop off because I got some stuff to do it is Sunday right now the 14th tomorrow morning Jesse has another appointment in Nashville so we gotta get up early and drive nearly two hours <laughs> that away to um, go to his bone doctor and come home hopefully everything still looks good and yeah the good thing about all this stuff that's been going on is his ins our insurance deductible has been met so now everything's pretty much covered except copays <laughs> for the rest of these the vendor bill um er visit pretty much covered the deductible uh so everything else all the, the extra little visits are covered and uh yeah so i guess that's the silver lining at least we have insurance even if it's kind of crappy, but whatever. <laughs> we had a huge storm hit yesterday and it wasn't bad, but it was really windy and it totally messed up the back porch. It knocked over my tomato plants and Devin's pepper plants. It broke some of his pepper plant stems off like branches. So um, I had to run out there in the rain to pick up the tomato plants because they blew completely off the porch and into the yard and we live in an apartment complex. So, you know, I can't just leave my stuff out in the yard. So I went out there and moved our plants inside. I don't think it messed with the cucumbers too bad. And, um, yeah. Oh, I got something to show you guys. My pickles. They're so pretty. They got all that stuff floating around in there and deal. I made these the other day. Uh, let's see here. The day that I made the crochet chat, I, on the end of that, there was a clip of me talking about making pickles. <laughs> the next day after that, I actually made them. Ugh, smells so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. They taste good too. <laughs> Devin actually, he just went to his dad's to play drums. And um, he took another jar. I made a jar of spears and then I made a jar of like hamburger cut, whatever, you know, little slices. And he took that over there so that they could try them because I wanted him to let them try them. And now I'm excited. <laughs> and it's been raining like crazy, so I should get a lot of cucumbers in a few days because they're 96% water. So when it rains, they grow like crazy. And um, pickles, I may have to go to my mom's and get more jars because they're so good. Now, these aren't canned, so they're not, um, say, uh, what is it? What am I looking for? Shelf stable. They're, you have to eat them within like three weeks of making them. So, uh, but I'm a pickle person, so they'll be eight in three weeks. I normally, I used to, <laughs> I normally buy the, um, it's a C word. So, refrigerated kind of pickles, they sell at Walmart. It's cool. It's a C-word. I can't remember. But they're like the best pickles out of a store, I think. Way better than Velastic and anything else. But um, these taste kind of comparably to them. I was pretty impressed. They're just refrigerator pickles. All that's in it is water, apple cider vinegar, black peppercorns, a little bit of chili, red chili flakes, garlic, and fresh dill. I think that's everything. Salt. Of course, salt. <laughs> and pickles. I mean, cucumbers. But they are yummy and they're so pretty. I can't get over how pretty that jar looks with like the dill sprigs in it and all that stuff at the bottom. And every time I get one out before I eat it, I shake up the jar real good. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm proud of my pickles. I want to learn how to can. Um, I think I might do that next year because we've already, this year we only grew uh, piglin cucumbers, little sweetie tomatoes, which are actually really tasty and I normally don't like tomatoes. I actually got one of those off the vine yesterday. And um, he's growing banana peppers because he loves banana peppers and uh next year i've already i've been doing a lot of research on container gardens in small spaces like apartment um patios and stuff and i've already got a whole list of things that i'm gonna grow next year like next year a whole patio is gonna be a garden um because i'm hoping by 2021 uh we'll have actual yard that we can have a big garden in but for sure next summer we'll still be here and I'm going to grow my cucumbers differently because right now they're in a big raised bed. And next year I'm going to put them, two cucumber plants, in buckets with trellises. Right now they're growing on the baby gate. You may have seen it in some video clips. 
and I'm gonna grow some more tomatoes. I wanna grow corn, because I've actually seen a lot of videos of people growing corn in containers, and uh, you can grow like five stalks of corn in one bucket, and you know, that that's plenty enough corn, because I'm the only one that eats it. Jesse hasn't got to where he wants to eat enough cob yet, <laughs> and Devin doesn't really like corn, so that, that'll be enough corn for me. And I wanna grow definitely more cucumbers, because my favorite vegetable, period. <laughs> I could eat that all day long. And I tried growing lettuce this year, but it didn't thrive, and that's because I didn't know anything about gardening uh, when I started, and I didn't know that that is a cooler weather uh, crop or whatever. So I probably just um, planted it at the wrong time. So, you know, it's all about learning, and I wanna learn and do really good next year with the porch and take advantage of all the space that I have out there. We have a fairly decent size patio, so we can take advantage of the entire space of it and grow food and <laughs> save our grocery bill because we're real strict on it. It's only $55 a week um, for us. We're, we're, base, we're lightly doing the Dave Ramsey program. Uh, we're doing the envelope system and uh, zero based budget and we're trying to keep our groceries low because I used to, oh, I don't even want to talk about I used to, but I used to spend so much money on food a week, like borderline almost $200 a week on f food for two adults and one toddler. And now that I'm spending $55 a week, I'm like, oh my God, I wasted so much money on crap food. And, um, but I'm learning, you know, everything's a learning process. You got to reteach your brain how to act and your body how to act. And that's actually another thing that I want to do is I want to start trying to be more plant-based and maybe not 100% plant-based, but um, more pickier with the type of food that we eat and that we bring home and eat. As in, I want to uh, slowly switch because it's going to be a transition, especially for the boys, um, into cleaner food. And, you know, I don't mind if they eat meat and dairy and all that, but it needs to be less processed, less hormone and antibiotic pumped full of stuff. And there's actually, I'm really lucky to live in an area that I do because we have a lot of options around us for local meats and local dairy products that are clean and not full of everything. And, um, the only thing is, in our area, you have to assign, you have to join special groups of, uh, I don't know how to get all into it, but it's basically waiving liability because, you know, the FDA doesn't approve uh, unpasteurized products or whatever. So, you know, they see it as dangerous. But, uh, I mean, what, 100 years ago, plus back, that's what everybody ate. <laughs> everybody ate unpasteurized foods. And, uh on hormone field and on antibiotic foods and all that jazz but whatever that's a really long random bit that has nothing to do with crochet but this is no catchy name crochet and life life is a lot of categories and if you don't like the life part then you can leave that's all i have to say about that <laughs> i always get a lot of thumbs down on videos that doesn't have a lot to do with crochet and i'm like crochet and sign life not just crochet period but whatever people people like to get their panties in a bunch all the time people get on my nerves i would love to be like a mennonite and just not have any electricity and technology and just go and grow food and raise kids <laughs> and all that jazz it would just be nice to um disassociate a lot with public <laughs> but I kind of picked a wrong little hobby to get into, you know, I, I want to back away from technology technology and communications and then I'm in a field, a hobby slash career-ish field that is all based on the internet. Me and Devin was actually talking about that earlier because I was telling him, I oh, know I'm going to rant again, so if you're not interested, bye, I'll see you in another video, sorry. <laughs> but um, we were talking earlier about uh, there's a local farm towards us. It's somewhere in our county or right outside our county in another local county. And we it's basically a hippie farm. And it's this huge farm run by this huge group of people. And they plant and grow all kinds of food. And they do all kinds of stuff there. I think they make like their own craft beer and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't drink beer. But they're basically, it's basically a huge group of hippies that are welcoming to anyone else who wants to come there and grow stuff and help them grow stuff. And tend to the gardens and stuff and I was like I want to do that so bad I was like I would love to become friends with these people and just be able to just go out to their garden and just hang out there like all day and you know be away from all the things that stress me out which is usually news stations and anything on Facebook that isn't about crafts and stuff like that so I don't know 
I just I keep wishing that life was the way it used to be when I was a kid. It didn't seem like things were so bad back then. But I guess it's just because I was a kid and I didn't know what was going on in the world. But yeah, I'm going to hop off and eat me some pickles because they smell really good and I want to eat some. And yeah, the next episode of No Catchy Name will hopefully have a little less cotton finished objects. We'll have... What else am I working on? I need to start some more amigurumis. I just realized I don't have any going other than my, um, my pattern. I'm excited about that. I will probably get some of y'all to test my pattern for me. But I'm only going to get the people who I know for a thousand percent will keep it secret until I want to release it. I already got an idea of a few people to get to test it. But I got to get the PDF made. I'm still working on the pictures and all that. It took me forever to figure out how to make a PDF. And hopefully I don't mess it up. But, um, yeah. I'm excited about it. <laughs> so, I'm going to hop off, like I said, and eat some pickles and figure out some amigurumis to make. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.